Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we are going to work on our who to follow box. It's something that we still haven't implemented. So that's going to be our main focus for today's video. Now, I do also like to apologize. We haven't had any new episodes in almost, I believe, 10 days or maybe two weeks. Unfortunately, I was extremely busy and I also got sick at the same time. So I wasn't able to upload any new videos. But I wasn't looking at your guys' comment. Many of you were asking, hey, uh, do we have any new episodes? So I thought I'd record a video. Now I'm still a little bit sick. So hopefully it doesn't impact the video uh, quality. So let's get right into it. Now this is relatively easy to implement. My idea is instead of kind of just having who to follow, we can have a top users here. So we can go ahead and show the users that have the most number of ideas posted on our website. I'll show you guys exactly how we can go ahead and do that using a vid count something we used for our like button optimization. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now I already have our dashboard controller as well as our uh, dashboard blade file open. And the reason I have done that is because this who to follow box is currently shown on basically all our pages, except I think for login and uh, dashboard, like authentication pages and dashboard. So if you take a look at feed page, we have who to follow, uh, profile page, view idea page. So we would need to actually write the logic for kind of getting the data on all of these controllers, right? And that's quite a lot of work. So for now, we just start off by doing it on our dashboard page. And later I will show you guys a trick that comes with Laravel that actually allows us to kind of have a shared global variable between all our uh, blade files. So we'll get that to that in a second. So let's start off by first doing that on our dashboard page. So I have already opened up both these files. I'm gonna start off with the blade file first. Now on our dashboard page, if we scroll down, guys, we have already uh, gone ahead and done the refactoring for the follow box. So it has its own blade file. So we don't need to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this file. And now that we are inside here, for now, I'm just going to minimize everything because it's quite a lot of HTML. It can be a little bit confusing to follow on the video. So the top section, we have our card. And then under that, we have our card header, right? As you can see, who to follow. So first, I'm going to go ahead and replace this with top users. We can name this whatever you like, guys. For now, just name it top users. And then under that, we have this card body with two extra divs. Well, three divs, but the first two divs, they have this class of edge stack and then gap two and margin bottom three, right? And you probably, got, you probably can guess basically this edge stack divs are the containers for the user names, as you guys can see over here, right? So each of these is actually one of those edge stack divs, right? Now, since we are going to be having a loop here, we don't need two of them, right? So I'm going to go ahead and remove the second one, right? That's it. So let's save that. And now I'm going to open up the last div. This one is a show more button. I'm not planning to implement that here. I don't think it's really useful. But if you would like to have a separate page where you show like all the users or whatever, you can keep the button. It's again something we can easily add later on. It's just a simple link. So for now, I'll delete this one as well. I'm just going to focus on the top users. Okay, so now if you open this up, uh, I'll just save it, make sure everything still works and that we did not accidentally break the HTML. It seems like we did not. And now we're good to go. Okay, so now, now that our blade file is ready, let's go back to our controller and actually write the logic for this. So I'm going to go ahead under this code that we have here, where basically we are searching for our ideas. I'm going to go ahead and create a new variable of top users. We can maybe name this recommended users, whatever you guys prefer. I think top users matches what we have on the front end, and it's also relatively short compared to recommended users. And so first, let's just write a simple logic. We can load our user model and let's say order by, and I'll just use order by created at for now and we can order it by descendingly and then limit it to five users and get all those users. So this is going to be the basic logic. This will just get the, you know, the, la the last five users that they have joined our website. Now, what we like is we want to get the most active users, basically users that have the most number of ideas. This is actually relatively easy to do. We can use the same code we used for our vid count here, guys, if you guys remember. So if I open up our idea model, I believe we added vid count. So if you guys haven't seen the video on vid count, I do recommend you check it out. Although it's not necessarily required to follow along. 
But basically what we can do is we can go ahead and call the with count method here on our user model, not the idea. And this will go ahead and basically count the number of ideas we have for each user. So in this case, I'm going to say with count ideas. And what you put here needs to match the relationship you have defined on your user model. So if I open up our user model and I scroll down, we have our ideas relationship. So whatever function name you have here needs to match what you put inside with count. And this will go ahead and basically write additional query that will count the number of ideas for every user model instance, right? And then it will go ahead and add it as ideas count. Okay, so it will be added and we will have access to this ideas count, right? And the naming is basically your relationship name followed by underline count. I do have a separate video on this, guys, again, but just doing a quick recap. So now that we have access to this, we can actually go ahead and use this inside our order by. So instead of created at, we can go ahead and use ideas count just like this. And that's all we have to do, actually. So this, we are basically taking... Uh, the number of ideas that each user has. And then we are telling Laravel, hey, go ahead and actually sort it by ideas count. Last but not least, obviously, we don't want to show the entire database. We are limiting it to only five users. Now, sometimes uh, because I'm on autopilot, I might use take five. It's basically the same thing as using limit five. So I might use them interchangeably, but it basically does the same thing. I don't think I have covered take five, but uh, if I have used it sometimes, it's basically the same as limit, okay? So I'll use limit because I think that's what most of you guys are familiar with. Okay, that's it. And now that we have this, I'm gonna move this to multiple lines so it's a bit easier on the video. We can pass this variable down to our dashboard blade file. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We can say top users, top users. Now I believe on some other controllers, we are using the compact. So if you guys would like, you can also use compact, uh, but you know, I'll leave that for a different video for now. I'm gonna just pass it in. And now that we have done that, we can go back. Obviously, if we reload, we don't get any errors, so that's good. We can now go ahead and use this top users to loop through uh, all the users we have and then display them inside our, who, uh, our follow box. So let's open it up. And we need to now go ahead and above this edge stack, add a for each loop, right? So each of these, each stack is supposed to be a single user. So I'll add a for each loop here, for each. So the variable name is top users as user. Now I need to move this end for each under our div. Basically it needs to be above this div. And now we can actually go ahead and use this user variable to basically update all of these. So the first one is going to be the profile image. So let's go ahead and update this. So I'll update the SRC with user now for this one, I'll open up our user model. We do have a method for it called get image URL. So I'll just use this. Now I do remember the image is probably going to be big. So let me reload. Yeah, it looks too big. So we can go ahead and just limit the size to, like, I don't know, some value. So I'll just go ahead and add an inline uh, CSS. We can set the width to 50 pixel. I think that's what we did for these cards as well. So let me reload. And as you can see, guys, now looks pretty nice. Next up, let's go ahead and change these names. So for the name, it's over here, Mario Brother. Uh, we can go ahead and just do username. Under it, it's supposed to be like the username. We don't really have a username on our application. If you have added that on your own, you can obviously echo it here. I will go ahead and I think echo the user's email instead. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just copy the exact same code so we don't have to type as much. Let's switch this to email. And uh, let's just see how it looks. The email might be too long. Now, if the email is too long, as you can see, guys, it's becoming like dot, 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 dot. I think that's okay. Uh, I do still prefer it to have uh, like be two lines instead of just having the name. But if you don't like that, you can just display the name itself, okay? And la one last thing, we need to also update these hrefs. So when we click on it, it actually goes to the user's profile. So let's go ahead and update that as well. So I'll do route users show. We have done the exact same thing multiple times. And then I can pass in user ID. Now, I'm not sure I have explained this or not, guys, but when you have kind of resourceful routes, you can actually just pass in the model itself and it will still work. Like Laravel is smart enough that it knows that, hey, we are using the ID for this route, for the route model binding. 
So if I don't pass in the ID, it will automatically under the hood will go ahead and take the ID and the code will still work. However, one drawback with this is if you're just reading your blade files, you won't know what is used as like the unique identifier for the routes. Now, generally, I personally don't like that for YouTube videos because, you know, you're watching the videos with a couple of days between them. So you don't, you might lose some of the context. So I'll always prefer to basically define exactly what we're passing in. But if you want your code to be a little bit shorter, you can just do it this way. And this also makes it easier to refactor later on. If you, for example, instead of ID, want to use something less like slug, uh, if you don't define it here and just pass the model, Laura will automatically use slug, right? So that's one upside to it. But for now, I'll just go ahead and pass the ID so we know exactly what we are using on the video. Let me go ahead and copy this. We have another href down here. I'll paste it here as well. I think that's all. Now, this is supposed to be some follow button or something. I think I'll just get rid of it. I don't think I'll want that. So let's do that as well. And I think that's all. So let's do a reload. Make sure everything works. It does. Let me click on one of the links. And it is working. Now we are getting this error. We'll come back to this error in a second. But I think now this is working as we expected. Okay, guys. So now that we have implemented the top users on our dashboard page, let's go in and see what that error was all about. I click on any other link. And uh, you guys probably can guess. Basically, it's telling us undefined variable top users. Now, the reason for this is this follow box is actually imported on almost all our pages, right? As I showed you guys at the beginning of the video. So, and right now we are only passing it in to our dashboard view file. So the kind of primitive solution or the easy solution would be, we can go ahead and copy this top users and then paste it in on all the controllers, right? Now, this is a lot of work. For now, I guess I'll do it on our idea controller. Let's just to demonstrate what we need to do. So uh, let me open up the idea show page here. So obviously we are getting the error. So in order to fix it with the current knowledge we have, we would need to come on our idea controller, paste this in, and then pass this top users to our idea show, right? So let me do that without the dollar sign. And then uh, on not on the store page, but basically on the edit page, we need to do the exact same thing as well, right? So for now, just do it for the show page. And if I reload, it should hopefully fix the issue. As you can see, the error got fixed, right? But if I go to the edit page, we get the error again. So I need to basically copy paste this variable on every single basically method or controller method we have. Now, not only this is a lot of work, what if later on you decide to change this, I don't know, to let's say 10 users or this becomes ascending. You need to go ahead and update all of those controllers again. It's just way too much work. Now, you can definitely extract this logic into a separate class or service. But in that case, it's still, you need to go ahead and update all of these controllers to at least include it, right? So in those cases, a better solution is we can go ahead and use a kind of global variable or define a global variable for our blade files. And I'll show you guys exactly what I mean by that in a second. So let's take a look at it. So now that we know that the limitation with the current solution that we have, I'll just remove all of these and I'll show you guys the global variable solution I just mentioned. Okay, I'll even remove it. Uh, well, for now, we can, we can keep it on the dashboard page. But so, uh, yeah. Now, let's go ahead and open up the Laravel documentation because I want you guys to know exactly where to find it. So let's type in Laravel uh, documentation. So let's open up the Laravel documentation. Now, what we're looking for, guys, is under, uh, I believe, digging deeper or the basics, sorry, under the views blade file. Okay, so let's open up the views. And it's right over here. It's under sharing data with all views. So this is basically the global variable I was referring to. And what this does, guys, is we can go ahead on our service providers, use the view facade, and call the share method. And this will basically add a variable to all our blade files. So we define it one time, but it will be accessible to all our blade files. So it's very convenient for our current use case, okay? So if you are looking for it on the documentation, this is where you can find it. I will also try to include the link in the, the description. So let's go ahead and actually use this. So I'll open up our app service provider. I'll search for it. 
And if you want to know exactly where the file is, guys, it's under App Providers, App Service Provider. So we need to include this under our boot. So I'll just come down here and we need to first include the view facade. So obviously I have the PHP plugin on VS Code, but it is going to be under view, sorry, illuminate support facades view. So I'll import that. And then we need to go ahead and use the share uh, static method. Now the first argument or the parameter it accepts is the key. This is basically the variable name that you want to use inside your blade file. We already know what that is. It is top users. So I'll just copy it from here and I'll paste it here. And then the second one is going to be the value itself, right? The variable value. So, and for this one, I'll, again, I'll copy it from what we have inside our dashboard controller. So let me copy this. I'll go to our app server provider. I'll paste that in here. Now, we also need to import this user variable. So let me import it. And that's all we have to do. And let me also add the semicolon. And that's it. So now we have defined kind of a global variable. Now, you can extract this logic into its own uh, separate class. Maybe you have like a service, statistics, whatever you like. You can go ahead and extract this into its own kind of single component. For now, I'll keep it here because I don't want the video to get too complicated. But that's it. So now that we have done this, this top users variable will be accessible from all our blade files. Now, there are some other methods that a lot of it provides. So for example, you can go ahead and only use the composer method to only pass it into like specific blade files. That's a little bit different from our use case, but if you like that, go ahead and read the documentation, guys. There are more advanced use cases uh, if you need them. Okay, so that's it. Now if you go ahead and we reload our pages, it should still work. So if I reload the view page, it works. If I go to the edit idea page, it works. If I go to the profile page, works at our personal profile, feed, home. Uh, so that's the easiest solution we have in this case. And since we have defined it here, I can actually go ahead and remove it from our dashboard controller. So I'll remove it from here. And I also need to remove this. And I already, I think, removed it from our idea controller. Well, let me double check. I already did. So let's save this. Let's save dashboard controller. And bam, that's it. So uh, it's a very easy and convenient way to pass a variable to all our blade files using this uh, syntax, a view share. And that's it, guys. Super easy to use. Now, it's also relatively smart. So if we go to our dashboard, admin dashboard, and we take a look at Laravel debug bar and take a look at our queries. Even though I said it's shared between all blade files, it's kind of a lazy loading them. So what that means is if I reload on our admin dashboard, we are not using the follow box blade file. It isn't actually making a database query. So it's very smart. It's not going to send the query if you are not using the variable top users, which is something I really like about this uh, functionality. Okay, that's it, guys, for today's episode. I hope you learned something new. Now, if you have any questions, as always, you can ask me in the comment section below. If I know the answer, I'll try to help. If you see someone else has a question, please help them out. Now, if you are new to the channel and you still haven't subscribed, I appreciate it if you subscribe and you like the videos. It's the best way to support the channel. It helps the channel grow, and YouTube really likes people engaging with the videos. It will just shares it with more people. But that's it, guys. I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.